Welcome back to Crux Stationalis, the Roman Station Church Network. Today, on the Wednesday of the fourth week of Lent, we have returned to the Roman Station Church that we visited on Sexagesima Sunday, the Basilica di San Paolo Fuori de Mura. We look to the apse mosaic, and we enter the cosmic reality of the liturgy, of the life of the Church. Day to day we pass our lives in time. Yet, when I look at the liturgical year as a whole, and when we enter the specific liturgies in which we take part, we enter the paradox of the now but not yet, of the past and the present, and of the future glory that is had yet is still to come. And so today we go a bit off course, and we look to the apse mosaic completed by Venetian masters who were working on the Basilica di San Marco in Venice. This mosaic was completed between the years 1220 and 1227. We see Christ enthroned, and to his right we see Saints Paul and Luke, and to his left we see Saints Peter and Andrew, and below we see the other apostles. The open book in Christ's hand carry the eschatological words, Come, blessed of my Father, and receive the kingdom that has been prepared for you since the foundation of the world. Each of the apostles in the lower band of the mosaic hold a scroll inscribed with one of the verses of the Gloria, the hymn of praise to the Holy Trinity. They stand on either side of the Hetimasia, a Byzantine representation of an empty throne on which rest the instruments of the Passion. And above this sits a jeweled cross similar to the one Emperor Constantine set up on Calvary, of which we have seen in other mosaics, like that of Santa Pudenziana. We turn to the words by Dom Gerenje as we gaze upon this mosaic with the apostles carrying the words of the Gloria. He says, The Holy Church contemplates her divine spouse, throned in the highest heavens, qui sedes a dexteram patris, who sits at the right hand of the Father. Just before, in this highest hymn of the Church's praise, the Church was complacently looking at him as the Lamb of God, who had taken on himself the sins of the whole world. She now advances higher, and goes even to the Father's right hand, where she beholds him who is the object of her adoration and praise. There she reaches the very being of God. There she pays her homage to all holiness, all justice, all plenitude, all greatness, as she is now about to proclaim. But first she repeats her cry for mercy, Miserere nobis, have mercy on us, for you have redeemed us. Tu solus sanctus, tu solus dominus, tu solus altissimus Jesu Christe, you alone are holy, you alone are Lord, you alone are most high, O Jesus Christ. Thus in this canticle, Holy Mother Church perseveres in her endeavors to reach her divine spouse. Each one of her exclamations is like an attempt to be with him. She thinks of her own necessities. She thinks of him. She is all enthusiasm. She no sooner mentions his name, she must tell all his perfections, not one must be forgotten. She dwells on his name, because he is her spouse. She praises him, and glorifies him, and calls him the alone God, the alone Lord, the alone Most High. She adds, however, cum sancto spiritu in gloria dei patris, together with the Holy Ghost, in the glory of God the Father. Thus she mentions each of the three persons of the Blessed Trinity, and the praise she gives to Christ by calling him alone holy, alone Lord, alone most high, applies also to the other two persons, since the Father and the Holy Ghost cannot be separated from the Son, and like him they are alone holy, alone Lord, alone most high. And no one is holy, no one is Lord, no one is Most High, except the great God Himself. The Church abstains during the season of Lent 
from the heavenly hymn which the angels sang over the crib of the divine child. The beginning of the angelic hymn seems more suitable for heavenly than for earthly voices, but the second part is in no way out of keeping with the sinner's wants and fears. For we therein remind the Son of the Eternal Father that He is the Lamb who came down from heaven, that He might take away the sins of the world. We beseech Him to have mercy on us and to receive our humble prayer. We have this long period within the liturgical year where we refrain from this canticle of praise, this canticle of relationship with the Blessed Trinity. The absence is meant to increase our desire in our hearts. How glorious it is when the darkness of the Triduum Vigil vanishes. The silence is replaced by the ringing of bells and the chanting of hearts who have awaited the glorious resurrection of Christ. So let us in these days of Lent foster these sentiments within us, for they are so appropriate during this liturgical season. In the Easter Vigil, all is at once grand and simple. The Holy Church is in admiration at the thought of her divine spouse. Passing from the Kyrie to the hymn of the angels, she takes up the angelic chant and continues it. And the same spirit that spoke through the angels to the shepherds taught also the church how to worthily close the canticle. You alone are holy. You alone are Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ. Together with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen.